So how did you get involved in this, in the movement that you were involved in? I got saved in the early 70s out of the Lutheran Church and went looking for a church I did find for several years. Watched TBN, so grateful to be saved uh, out of a uh, head knowledge of the Lord. Um, raised in a Lutheran home uh, in a church, I thought I was saved. I wasn't. When I got saved, my life completely changed. Um, almost ruined my marriage, but my life completely changed. And I got into the body of Christ, glad to be saved and um, looking for the, the early charismatic movement was very powerful and the baptism and Holy Spirit touched everybody including me and it went from that to signs and wonders and I finally went to a few wicked and perverse conferences that's what Jesus called them when they're looking for a sign and the wonder and um, and it just kind of grew from there from the um, from the television, and um, it it finally got boring, and I just I, I it didn't make sense. And I was listening to this person and that person, and going to this conference and that conference, and I just drew back. And I was watching Copeland and all the rest of them, and I just said to myself, "Is he never going to teach on anything but the blessing, the blessing, the blessing?" And a friend of mine uh, handed me a quarterly from Moriel, the one that Jacob wrote that uh, was titled uh, Jehu, God's Assassin, and it just ripped right through me. I knew it was truth, and I called the phone book, the phone number that was on the quarterly, talked to David Lister, and I had to have some more. I had to have CDs. I had to have something to learn some more about this. And um, David Lister talked to me for 20 minutes or almost half an hour, asked me if I knew what Midrash was. Of course I didn't. And he said, oh, we're going to have, uh, Jacob's going to be in Southern California here. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, in Devore. I said, Devore? Nobody's ever in Devore. <laughs> And so Jacob was due to speak out here in a couple months, and I went to hear him. And at that point, Jacob said, um, if you're looking for a good church, I recommend this one. And it was from then on that I began to learn the real word and to find out that there was so much life in the word itself. I had listened to people teach short portions of scripture which sounded really fine and I just realized it was getting duller and duller and um, it was a mess and I was really without a church until I found one that that taught and then I got into Danny Isom's um, Bible study and I it was incredible so what would you what would you advise people to do who are caught up in that uh, those TV preachers and whatever, uh, and w how can they, how can they get out of that and move? move well, ahead? what I did was just pick up the Bible and read it, and I read and I read and I read, and once I got through the repenting, and it took a while to repent, and um, when when you get a new truth that you realize is is uh, contrasting to a lie that you've had in it, it's almost like a little piece of of darkness just leaves and every time it leaves you repent again and it's just a series of repentance 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 uh to this day i'm still repenting oh lord uh, when i used to believe that or used to believe this and and uh i found out that just reading the word was enough. It didn't matter what in it I read and I realized very quickly that the sermons that I was listening to took a few verses which found it sounded wonderful, sounded great. Yeah, oh, we've got all this power and we are seated with him in heavenly places and and he wants us blessed and he wants us wealthy and he wants oh gosh. Oh, I'm so I still repent of it. It just hurts. 
So, do you think you, you do you really do you think that you had to basically have your whole sort of Christian worldview <laughs> rearranged? Yes, yes, it had gone so deep, and it it appeals to the flesh so much that uh, I realize uh, I had nothing on the Is Israelites at the foot of the mountain. I I mean uh, when Moses went for the commandments uh we all have our own golden calves and it just was disgusting it's disgusting and it, it's so good to be free and just to read the word to read it in context danny taught us to read inductively and to take the whole passage and understand where it came from and what it's saying well, it makes a big difference to have the Bible taught verse by verse, which I was so glad to see is going on in this church. And because otherwise, you're just you're hunting and pecking and pulling out things you like, but and making your, up your own doctrine from them instead of having the Bible right. correct you. I had one more major issue that in the Lutheran Church, obviously, it had an effect. Uh, uh, they don't teach eschatology at all. So when I got saved, everything was premillennial pre rapture, da, 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 and I wasn't a bit sure about the rapture. So I laid it on a table. I just set it aside and essentially thought, mm, the rapture sounds good, but it's just too good to be true. I really didn't. Yeah, I just didn't believe it too much. I didn't pay too much attention to it. When I came here, Pastor Marco was teaching on Revelation. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go here as long as he's teaching Revelation. That's why I'm here. I've got to learn about Revelation because I knew I never learned about it. And I know it's true, but I don't know. I don't understand it. And one day in church, I burst into tears because I got a revelation from the Holy Spirit. And it was real, real, real. Poor Marco came down from the platform. He thought it, he'd done something wrong and something was wrong with me. I said, no, something's right. But... Uh, by the Holy Spirit, I got a revelation one Sunday. So I stayed here on, on, until he was through with revelation, which was a long time. It was a few years. And then I thought I was supposed to leave, but I wasn't. <laughs> I was due to stay here. So I just stayed on. And it's wonderful. It's great to come to a church that that you're free. It You know you're not going to have to fight the demons of mm, bad teaching. Sometimes when churches are that bad, you are worse when you come home than when you went. You put up with all the doubt and unbelief. Okay, so um, what kind of a movement were you involved with and when did you see that you kind of needed to get out of it and and get involved in a, a biblical church or whatever? <laughs> well, I had a good start. Uh, I was raised a Seventh-day Adventist, and uh, so I had a lot of teaching that was false right from the beginning, being in a, in a cult like that. And uh, then I left the church, and years later I came back, back into a Seventh-day Adventist church. But this was different. This was a, a, a very, very liberal, open Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. church, unlike mm -hmm. any other in this area. And uh, they had a lot of teaching that was new to me, and I was hungry to learn um, more about the Lord. I wanted to, to be, uh, serve him. And so um, <clears throat> there was the Alpha course that was given. I went to Cleansing Stream several times <clears throat> to um, be cleansed. Uh, and um, Let's see, we had uh, Rick Warren come as one of our speakers. So I went through the whole gamut of all these people. But the thing that brought me out of that church was that a dear friend that went had been studying about Ellen G. White. And she did a, a, a long study that took us two years on uh, the shadow and substance. And we did a, a comparison of what Ellen G. White teaches why we did this and why we shouldn't, what the word said. And that brought me out. It was heartbreaking because I, I had to leave all the people that I've known since I was a child, including my family. Um, 
from there, we thought, okay, we've arrived. My husband had become a Christian, had been baptized in the church, and now we were worshiping together. We went into a Sunday-keeping church, and I thought, wow, here we are, finally where the Lord wants us. But through that, we learned a lot about the signs and wonders. Uh, we did conferences right there in our church. We had Todd Bentley come, and we had John Paul uh, Jones and, oh, Jackson. Oh, Jackson. And just various. We went to The Rock in Pasadena, Che On, and saw uh, Heidi Baker. And, uh, you know, we've seen them all. And um, <laughs> we got to the point where we got just really tired of they were all, everything was about money. You know, this conference, 200, that conference. And people were running. All of our friends <clears throat> were running to go to these conferences. Oh, are you going to go this? Are you going to go that? And so we began to pull away, and, and actually, I, I really truly believe it was the work of the Lord to pull us out of this. We got the experience of what was happening. We saw, but um, we had a, a, an issue with our pastor of some things that he was doing that were, that were not right, that were so obvious, and we actually lost our church. We were evicted, a church being evicted <laughs> out of its own building. And so this was heartbreaking to us, and we left the church. We thought we're not going back anymore. You know, we, we, everywhere we go, we tried visiting churches and all they talked about is the prophetic and you got to get up and speak the prophetic. All this stuff was just everywhere. Well, we began a ministry out in a park, no walls. Uh, there was nothing there except the grass and the trees. And we began ministering to children. This grew into ministering for parents and adults too. And we're still there today. But what truly changed us completely and brought us back into the Lord is we started a Bible study. We were invited to somebody's house and we were invited and Jacob Prush was there. <laughs> He's been mighty instrumental in our lives and so we went to hear him and I had been looking for a Bible study but all the Bible studies were on the languages of love or a Father Lawrence or you know these are the kinds of things we kept falling into. And so I wanted to hear the word of God. I wanted to know it. I wanted to understand it. And so uh, we came, and then we were invited to continue coming to the Bible study weekly, which Danny Isom was giving. And we began to really understand. And it just changed our lives. It's, it's still changing our lives. It's a continual thing. Uh, I like what my friend uh, Rusty said about repenting. It's a continuous repentance. You're reading something and it just hits you and you say, that's me. You know, I need to change this. And these are areas that God is showing us. So I, I really truly believe it was divine intervention that the Lord had a use for us elsewhere and it wasn't going to be in the church there. Um, and so we, we started coming here to DeVore. Actually, Danny said, you guys aren't going to church. You need to get connected in fellowship. And we began to come here to DeVore. And um, that's pretty much. And, you know, you asked that I think uh, Tim mentioned that we were supposed to explain why or what we would say to our friends. I have many, many, many friends. And I see them on Facebook. And I see they're quoting Joel Olstein, Rick Warren. And, and I'm just, it breaks my heart every time I see that. And I just continually pray for them that they will come to truth. And the only place they're gonna get truth is through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. They have to break that Bible open that's sitting on the shelf with dust on it. They have to open it up and study it, not read it. I've read the Bible many, many times. They have to study it word for word, you know, um, and, and really get to have an understanding. Uh, I liked when, when um, Jacob was teaching on Midrash. Wow, that was eye-opening, and to have an understanding why these things were said, who they were being said to, why they were being said, and that they're relevant to us today. All these things are relevant to us today. And if I could say one thing to my friends is get back into God's Word. Begin to study it. Put aside all those books. I took all my books, Rick Joyner and Wagner, all these. I took them and burned them. I would not give them away. I didn't want anybody else to have them. And I burned them and will not have them. What just cleared my shelves off because I love to read. I had all these books on my shelf that I had been reading 
and it's misleading. It's not the word of God. He has everything we need in his word. He's given it to us. It's a, the most beautiful gift we could have. And uh, that's, that's what I would say to my dear friends, and I pray for them all the time. You know, one thing that, that Carol had left out, though, when we started going to the conferences with, uh, with Todd Bentley and, and, and Bill Johnson and, and these guys, we were seeing so much that they spent more time on a sermon of why you need to give money than they did on anything else. And, I, and they're, they're preaching on gold dust in your hands and diamonds falling and look, it's coming. Well, why are they preaching on money if they've got all this gold dust laying there? They can just ought to be able to wipe that off and go down to the, <laughs> to the market and sell it. I remember at one Todd Bentley conference, they were getting ready to take up offering after a 45 minute sermon on, if you give 200, you're gonna get 2000 back. And it had the people all worked up. I, I saw one of his own people go up and throw a wad of money on stage. Now, nobody else in the audience probably knew this, but then people started running up on stage and throwing money down, and it had to be tens of thousands of dollars by the time it was through. And Todd Bentley sitting there saying how important he is that when he goes, people clamor to carry his luggage. They take him to the best hotels. They take him to the best restaurants. And, and I'm thinking, you know, and Bill Johnson is saying, if you've got a, a, an ailment like a, a, a knee out, I just reach up into the throne room and there's a whole warehouse up there of body parts and I pull it down and put it on them. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> so we started seeing real fast, something's not right here. So these people aren't, but people were in a frenzy. It was like a rock concert. We saw people, they would go in and start laughing and lay hands on somebody. That person would fall down and then that person would start laughing and get back up. Well, they had, they had somebody now. Every time that person would get up, they would lay hands on them and laugh, and that person would fall back down. It was, it was like a clown outfit going on there. And you're thinking, yeah, this ain't right. But the money part was what I started noticing. Give me that 200 and you're going to have $2,000 next week. Give me that gold watch you got there, and you're going to get diamonds around your neck. And then feathers falling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God has signs and wonders, but he doesn't have it for your glory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. I think anyway. the greatest signs and wonders we've seen is people repenting and yeah. people turning to the Lord. Amen. And, and even out of our ministry, having yeah. people baptized and come to the Amen. Lord, those are the greatest miracles, and those are the ones we want to see. But we still have so many friends that are in that, yeah, and you just can't tell them. They're going to have to learn it themselves and by praying, and, and they, don't, they don't read the Word. They think they do, but they read what they want to hear.